Welcome back, and we're going to pick up from where we stopped. So, Pastor Shego, it's good to have you here. I'm with Pastor Shego. Equate money, so Yeah. So, let's jump into this season. I, I love... So, when you did all of that, I think you went into another season when the Lord pulled you back. What's that about? Yeah. Uh, because how do you deal with the fact that... You know, I feel like someone that started young, that have done all of these things, will be... I mean, I'm not saying you're not a frontliner, but your name should be top 10. We have the billion followers and everything. How do you deal just, with that reality? Yeah. Um, I still had the conversation recently, and I said to myself that God is wise. Mm. It might be painful on the flesh every time God pulls you back. But there are two things. Mm. It's probably something in that season that you needed to really, really get. That's probably mm. made God say, go back. Mm. Many times, and mm. this is more particular in my context, it is more about the reconfiguration for the next season. Oh, and that's what on. I've seen happen again and again. For example, this whole thing began with the whole evangelistic drive, crusades. But after a while, I saw God transit me from the evangelistic operation mm. into operations in the prophetic. And I'm not just, I'm not just talking about prophesying. The gift, yeah. I'm talking about the operations. Operations, the governance. Where, yes, where God is saying to you, this is where this is moving, and I need you to partner with me, mm. and I need the people under your space coming under that awareness. Mm. That operation, very intense, especially when, you know, began around the time I was on campus, mm. and then, you know, you know, the people who knew me on campus knew me more with the whole prophetic with, thing. Yeah. Oh prophetic God, thing. It. Before <laughs> it became, a, before it became very popular as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, Next phase, I saw God pulling me when he opened eventually the opportunity for me to pastor a local assembly, which I dreaded, dreaded, you know. I didn't see that coming. I've learned to never say never be good. <laughs> dreaded. Dreaded because my parents are pastors. I saw the sacrifices mm -hmm. they made growing up. We honestly made me pastoring. I didn't want anything. Then, I'll be not sincere with you, there is the novelty that comes to travel ministry. Yeah. You're not in the... Like daily mess of, of people's pastoring. lives. Oh my God! So you come in, the table is set. You hit. You, come on. You run. You do what you need to do. You know, there's then, excitement. You you stare at the ground. Yeah. You try the place. What well, well, that day today? Pastor, yeah, man, the pastor. My nose. <laughs> my chest. And you enjoy the novelty because it's it, there's no see finish. Yes. You know. You know. So that was good <laughs> for me until the pastoring thing began to show up, and I fought it for well over two years. You know. So God moved me into pastoral ministry and then the teaching thing. And so there are people who saw me as an evangelist, could not receive me as a prophet, oh my saw God. me as a prophet, could not receive me as a life. pastor because they're like, no, he doesn't teach. And then they say, ah, is that him? And then when they see the teaching, the pastoral, they're like, has he lost the flow of this <laughs> spirit or the prophetic? How do you feel? Because some, it feels like you're talking about, you're talking about like, you just feel like, 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 and it feels like you're trying to have stability. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to say, this is who I am. Yeah. And God's like, um, but this is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it right when you said never say never. Because wow. the temptation is for a person to settle too early and conclude that this but is it, what it, does it I don't think it does that with everybody. I don't think so. I think it's more I don't think because you're special. It's just what a you're selection of for. grace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you, so you move you again from pastoring to teaching? Yeah, so did one you of those things. You stopped pastoring? I, yes, I think I he told you to shut the church or something. Yeah, so I had to pull out totally from pastoring the church and then submit um, um, to my mentor, serve in the local assembly, Bishop Bob uh, Lunge, amazing, amazing man of God. I don't think many people have the skill set to uh, be able to manage you know, this kind of thing, this season of my life and everything. He's one of the most gracious people. Mm. He He's keen in his... He's such a man of God, you know, that I deeply respect. And, you know, that season of, you know, just being under that um, covering... Knowing where just, you're coming from. Yes, knowing the story, knowing the implications. Very secure. Very, very, very wow. secure. Very amazing. <laughs> And it's not just, you know, it gets to a point in your life, you're not about the microphone. Mm. You're about accuracy. Mm. You're about all of this process cannot be for nothing. Mm. You wow, know. thank you, Jesus. So, I mean, you know, so it's not just, oh, we want to preach, but it's more, 
the workings of God in your life, preparing you for the next season that you are paying attention to, and God selects people to steward you That's in passive. that. And yeah, yeah. It, it's a whole skill set. And this is what I realized. God pulled Samuel out of an order mm -hmm. to establish something. Yeah. It takes a Samuel to be able to steward a David that was a disruption to what Saul represented. Because he's been through yeah. disruptions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So God chooses people wow. that understand the uniqueness of you know what you're transiting from into what you're transiting to. The problem is you would think that everything should be on all fours with the experience, but no. God knows that what wow. is available is enough. You know, so yeah, so Take that again. you would think that what? that you know your experience has to be on all fours or exactly mm. similar to what the mentor has gone through, mm. and so you're wondering this Wizard. and that. Yeah, but God is it. There is already Ooh. enough in God's arrangement and plan to take care of you with where He's because been. Because someone was asking about do you do you then have to have do you because I, I was saying that you don't have to move from apostle prophet to look for okay because i think god is moving to be apostolic so it's an apostolic is that <laughs> there's just a wisdom of god there's an and that's the word i use that there's enough mm -hmm. whoever god brings it might be like the person brings an apostolic gift into the house yeah. that will activate something in you yeah. whatever so how did you where are you now <laughs> i'm in transit <laughs> <laughs> i'm in transit a lot is happening and i feel slightly like oh is it not too early to but because I literally feel like I'm talking about stuff like that you're yeah, actually working in it's like just yesterday you know so there are things that um, are still under wraps but I believe that well, God has done all of this you, let's talk about that you know I say keeping it real like how do you deal with you're saying people do a lot of things that you used to do in your second you say a lot of things that you think you could still be doing now but if seen for a lack of a better word, God has kept you in a cave. How do you deal with that? So when you have such rich history with God, like you said, you can't be dragging the story. After a while, it becomes it become something else. It's almost like, is that, are you trying to brag? Are, what are you trying to do? Create respect for yourself. Yeah. I used to work in the day. You, yeah. How do you deal with that? I so know that you're loved, you're special, your son. I say the most important thing is God's goodness. Um, the seed of God does not die. You know, it's stupid to try to take credit for mm. this whole journey. It's <laughs> were there times that you've made poor decisions? Many, many times. You know, so you can look back and try to feel like you have a blueprint or a manual for no, no. I'll say I'm grateful to God because it wasn't all um silence. Mm. I wouldn't have been able to handle that. Mm. Um so God will bring me out, you know and work a season and trust me that I can handle being pulled back for the next season. Um, and so, I mean, in, in between of this, I've preached on, you know, massive platforms. You know, I remember um, a few years ago, I was on a platform about 50,000 audience convention, you know. So it's not all silence. I've also learned over the years that it is what is important that is important. So the hold and the leash of the high moments is broken over you. So you're not eager to post. Yes, you are not under that was, pressure. So that's the to, things that are happening, but you are not... The, that's not what it is for you. You are happy when you do, but your heart is in a surer place. Wow. You're not looking for validation. Are you saying from, that those processes birthed this? I would say God used them to just shift me. To just shift me. You are not... You, you are more about... All of this cannot be for nothing. Mm. I need to be accurate. So, your head is in a good place. And interestingly, you can't take credit for it. You can't. You can. I think from that's just the high point for me. Of you can't take credit so, like, for you it. You really can't no. take credit for it. Because, as some people say, if you really have it, you don't need to flaunt it. Sure. Like, if you really have it, you have it. Yeah. You don't need to forcefully make people see that, hey, I've got it. Yeah, true. I've got it. Yeah. Sometimes I, you are trying harder to convince yourself self, than, the, than people the people when actually, you are shouting how, yeah, how and screaming. How do you deal with that? How do you believe that, you know what, I'm chosen for So How did you come to that point where you're secure in yourself? I know it's a journey. I know, but it's gotten better. How did you get there? Um, so, there's something that I would not, you know, let's not deceive ourselves. 
the things that God does in your life will play a huge role in helping you. Mm. However, you cannot, mm. you cannot, you cannot depend on that exclusively. So there good. has to be something happening in your heart. This is the problem. If everything only happens in your heart, there is no manifestation. Wow. There's going to be a huge issue. After a while, you'll be like, God, why are you rewarding me in secret? Wow. <laughs> but I am praying in public. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. And all of those things. Right. So God balances it. Make sure that, you know, he, he doesn't leave you without a witness. So my life is littered with amazing activities of God, and that's awesome. But I think that what has done it for me the most is I've looked at the dealings of God in my life, the things He's brought me through, and the fact that He's helped me to see, to see how all of this comes together. Mm. I mean, there's a difference between trying to live to make something for yourself, apart from, or in contrast with, when you see the purpose your life serves. Wow. So changes good. everything. So you good. see lives change forever. You move from working miracles for self-validation mm. to working miracles because look at these precious people. Look at lives that need to be changed. Like, wow, why so would good. this daughter of Abraham Not be good. bound for these 18 it, years? Yeah. So everything. Compassion. Everything. You know, is it possible? Okay, sorry to cut you. I was saying something to people that, is it possible we're not seeing so much manifestation like we would because the heart of it is not compassion, it's validation. It's more about making a name yeah, for ourselves. You know, if you look at, Matthew, um, I think it is Luke 7, Luke 7 or John 7, each of them, either, either one. There was something that said, talked about when Jesus, they thought the brother said, would you go for this yeah. festive, festivity? And he said, Jesus. no, I'm not going. If you use passion strategy or one of those other passion he said, anyone else to make a name for himself is okay for them to go, make noise, show, show everybody. He said, how can you be doing such a good thing in the public? I don't know, what's your take? Why would God, why would Christ always do great things and say, be quiet about it? What do you think? What's he trying to? I think he did more for us. Mm. than for himself to model something yes i i i, I wow. think that if you're not careful this thing can take a life of its own and give you a life assignment it becomes a monster that eats you up. wow that's why after a while they started coming for jesus with a crown mm. and distraction from your assignment so if you wow. play if you play to it you're creating a monster that you'll keep feeding until Feeding it is not enough. Wow. It starts to feed on you. You wow. become what it eats, basically. You know. So can you, can you say that in play term? What does that look like? So it looks like, oh, I need to put this out. Mm. I need to put that out. And you think, oh, it's serving a purpose. And after a while, yeah. the thing becomes an addiction. You it takes it, it, that's what gives every decision of your life direction. You you the core is lost. You're just you are on a leash of all of those things. So Jesus did it more for us, I believe, to say, guys, keep it about what it's about. And then there's a limit to what God can entrust to you if you are all about the hype. Wow. There's a limit. Because your motive regulates the movement of the spirit wow. in your life. So there's, there's a limit to where you can play. Your motive regulates the yeah, movement of yes, the spirit in your life. Yes. Wow. You will have some, I'll be sincere with you, because God has given you the gift. Yes, the gift can work. Yeah. So you will have some. But in terms of God entrusting measures to you, it will not be God reluctant. It will be you not able to step into that place. Because, you know, the regulator of your life, the motive of, of what you're doing, has, you know, just put you in that small space. So, yeah, I hope I'm making sense in relation to your question. <laughs> like, I'm just so blessed because I feel like, you know, when you say God keeps moving, and I just want to speak to people that feel, you know, I told you this testimony because it's not just about the great moments, even the low, for people that feel like my life is, I think for me, I fought a lot, I fight a lot, or fought a lot, fight is, is we fought and fighting as together. It's past tense, yeah. sometimes it's present for stability. Hmm. Hmm. Is that can I just make sense right now? Like it just feels like the moment is making sense, it just comes like I'm like disruptive. I, I thought I thought this is what it is, right? I'm like, 
<laughs> and I know that is just control, really. Just one control. I want to say, this is what I am. Mm -hmm. You know, this is who I am mm -hmm. and all of that. And God that is saying, you have to learn is, you know, is what, what I say you are, that you are, not what you do. Yeah. And um, one thing that really blew my mind, I think one time, I think 2019, I was on a plane and God was telling me something to do. I was like, yeah. And he said, your greatest distraction will not be the things you can't do. But will be the things you can do that is not commercial. Wow. That's right. I thought I was I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. When he started playing out, then I'm like, O M G. Mm. And I was this person that was doing to Road Rage by Tilly Jakes. Like, that's a lovely message. Wow. And it said, he sat down with Casey Price and asked Casey Price, as you said, the message of faith. And he said, yeah, I was faithful with it. When people invite me, I was faithful to the message of faith. So if there's anything you want, you, you could go back and do, what would you do differently? He said, I'd probably not build the door. He said, why? He said, because it was permitted, not instructed. Wow. Oh, Pastor Shannon, that like, took me out. Wow. Because it was exactly like what God was saying to me. Wow. Like, so they're, they're permitted, they're not instructed. Hmm. For me, and then I said, what, what, what is the opportunity for God for every time you do something permitted, it's not instructed? Not instructed. Because there's no vacuum in the spirit. Hmm. So this thing you said is sometimes you be, you create a monster, and as I tell people that it's very easy never do because it will always bless me. Your gift to bless like the gift of God without repentance. Yeah. So someone say, oh my God, it bless me. It cannot be the reason why you're doing what you're doing. It hmm. can't be the reason alone why you're doing. God can use it to encourage you, but it doesn't mean that He becomes the encourager. That the hmm. Holy Spirit is the encourager hmm. and stuff like that. Hmm. You know, and every time I look at you, I just like I don't know how He's doing it. Not because there's anything, but not everybody starts to preach to a crusade, a crowd at seven. It's like some things that people are praying to happen to them. You've touched it at seven. Mm. It's like God did a reverse. He gave you, and that's why I can imagine the frustration. You make me taste this. Yeah, and then you, and then you take, you strip me off of it. I don't know what else to ask you at this point, but how can people reach you? How can they see what you're doing? You have this interesting thing you used to write on Twitter. You used to do it. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so one of the things that came out of this season of my life is that I realized that I was speaking to the people I was sent with, but my tone, I'm sent to, but my tone was influenced by the generation I've been with. So this season of silence really made me pay attention to a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, because you're always rolling with the old folks, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, So, I, I... Wow. This me, five years ago, will not be having this conversation with you. Glory! <laughs> this will be five years ago, we don't have a project called Tweets and Thoughts. And basically, I realized that this generation, you know, the profiling is different. Um, and some of the, the molds that we've created may not be effective. We have to reach the people. We, we, we have to focus wow. on the men and not the method in that sense. So find the men and figure out what works. And I know that I've been sent to a peculiar set of people who probably struggle with church, um, who probably struggle with this whole generational gap yeah. thing, mm -hmm. who probably don't belong or feel like they belong. They can't find where is, am I of the old, am I of the new, where am I? Yeah. And I know that you can't preach at those folks. So God inspired me around my birthday two years ago to put out this work, Tweets and Thoughts. And basically the idea is, you know, just to scatter seeds to start conversation. But it's contemporary conversation. Like where, so, you know... From the crusade for to the Twitter. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. But it took me a journey to make a lot of adjustments to be able to be that guy who's saying, okay, leave all the hype. God is into real stuff. Like, you know, the whole demystifying religion, getting to what it really is about, that's what tweets and thoughts is about. And Jesus' model was, he'll put the parable, compressed truth, then those who have been drawn to in you. by the parable yeah. will get the expounded version. So good. And that's really what I did with tweets and thoughts. Different topics on the faith, on life. I even share some of my stories in there, just to be able to speak to people, to say, you know, God is more about the man. Wow. You know, basically, so wow. there's tweets and thoughts and there are a few other things that are coming out. 
I'm going to put back soon by God's praise this book that I released about 10, 15 years ago, One Little David, One Big Battle. It's um, a book that captures my journey. How many books have you written? It will be two now. Mm. Um, I should have done the second um, edition to One Little David, One Big Battle, but I felt the Lord saying it's not time yet. So I trust God that um, latest next year, latest next year we'll have Wow. Apart from Twists and Thoughts, that's already out there. Um, we'll wow. be able to do that one little David. Will be, and I will be able to share, share more vulnerably yeah. my life journey. I don't think I did as much the first time I put the book out. Yeah. So this is different. Yeah. So please, can you tell, did you do bad? Um, how do you mean? Did, did, did I do you bad? go out into the world? Did you go away? Did you, did you miss? God helped me. I will not take credit for the protection. Okay. I mean, there were times where... You and, with sexual issues and all of those things. There was the lure of all the attention, but God kept my head in a good place. And I'll, 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 say, I'll say this. When you spoke about Michael Jackson and all of that, I remember watching his memorial and I was in tears. I never met the guy, but I heard people share about the enormous pressure he carried from his childhood, yeah. living in yeah. front of the camera yeah. before millions billions across the world and I could relate with the pressure and there comes a time where wow. you want to shake off that pressure and be and try and be normal and, and try your not, humanity and if you're not careful you go into you make yeah, that thing. yeah yeah and many young people get to that point and that's where they lose it which is why I'm careful to say I'm just a product of God's goodness you I, know I it's that it. the seed of God it. does not yes. die because I had enough pressure to say maybe why I'm going through this much mess is because I followed God. Why don't I revolt? Mm. Why don't I be like, let's shut this whole thing. It was a joke. You know, <laughs> there were, you know, there were times where thoughts were whispered. But I think God did something in his wisdom. My identity was set before I knew it. Oh my God. So I couldn't again. run from it. My identity was set long before I knew it. I mean, I this is the only me possible. If I had a moment of craze, this is the only <laughs> me possible. It's the only, I like, it's too late to have another life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. wow. It's been an amazing time having a conversation with you. We're going to be back again and just continue this conversation. Don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel. Yes, please subscribe on my YouTube channel. <laughs> but don't forget to also join our community. You can see in the description the um, O365 community. You can join our app. And then there's so many conversations. We have a lot of um, courses, free resources that you can be part of as well. Before you go, tell us something we don't know about you. It's married, by the way. It's okay. Now you know that. <laughs> How many kids? Two kids? Two, All two right. kids. See, I, I try. I try. Um, I'm more human than I look. <laughs> wow. I mean, the point is, I, I love to relate with people. I, I also have, you know, I yeah, try yeah, my less, hands. Yeah, less intense. You try your hands or what? Um, a little bit of music. I have a few songs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can sing. Oh, come I on. Thank few. you so much. <laughs> come on. <laughs> do, 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 do. We're not doing it today. <laughs> Sing something. Uh, uh -uh. Should I sing something? Yes, so, please. Sing something. Okay, should I? Uh, let's do this. It's an old song of mine. Mm -hmm. No words can describe who you are. No words can describe who you are. For you are great, glorious, and mighty. Yes, Lord. You are great, glorious, most high. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To be continued. <laughs> wow, I was just getting into it. I, I realized that's how you do it. You attack at them before they. You just you, open. Mm -hmm. They're doing like every so father. You can, you, you, say, you, you, oh, taste and they'll, see. They'll bring you out. Bring you out. Bring you out. <laughs> you know what I bring you out. Bring you out. You taste and see. <laughs> but the Lord is good that you come back and stay. <laughs> I want to release a blessing for anyone watching. Whatever you perceive in spirit. I mean, I think I also met you at the. I didn't meet you very evangelistic. I met you at the very prophetic. Um, that era and all. 
I, yeah. Also, you say, for which one have you not reached out? Which one have you moved to now? Which one are you now? Don't Can know. I plead the fifth? Okay, no, sorry. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you pass on that. Thank All right, you. So just, I just bless whatever is on your heart. For anybody watching, the fine liberation, because I feel such. Um, I, I, I think that's one other thing we say. I, I, I try. I, God is helping me. I won't say it's me trying not to lose my wonder. Mm -hmm. It's just like. Is God doing it? Yeah. I, I, I don't know how people take credit for these things. Because I think the issue is that when you see your life personally, you know that it's not about all the fasting True. and all the things. Uh, oh, we're sleeping, we're cheesing, we're chopping and stuff. Like, yeah. And I love how Bill Johnson says that. Like what you said, sometimes when we talk about the sacrifice, we make mm -hmm. it look like it equals yeah. the reward. No. No. Hmm. It's nothing compared. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... Um, I know that there's a lot of pressure in doing, in being called. I, I don't ever be, I don't want to stop being the baby of God, the Jesus baby, the, I never be caught so guarded that I can't love my father publicly. Oh. And however he brings it, oh. I'm able to just let go and be that, you know. So I just want to bless people with that. But from your heart, just speak to people that listen, that they are called, they believe they are called, they are loved, or someone that's been, you know, you know, you know, we just said about this thing jokingly, but I know, oh. I know, me I said, I didn't even preach. I don't preach a crowd when I'm seven, right? I do not do crusade, yeah? <laughs> so, but even the little, I mean, not to discredit, like, even the one, the, mm -hmm. the path I've worked, mm -hmm. I know how difficult it was for me settling in, because, I, I mean, I'm like, why well, such a rich, I mean, I've done my own small crusade at, you know, I was sharing some of my story, people were crying, I was in tears, because I'm like, it's not the, it's not what is seen now, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot. I know the dealings of God, the pullback and all. And if you're not rooted in God, it can literally drive somebody. Not. You're wondering, why, why were we rushing to? <laughs> why were True. we rushing to? True. If you know we're going to come here, you know, why don't you just allow us to go? Like, just go bam, bam, bam. Like, you're wondering, we're going somewhere, and then you're like, and I don't know what this is for. Sometimes it really feel like the big stage is a reward for obscurity or the big stage is a reward for the quiet days. For those mm. of you that have had quiet days, you started really quiet, and you're like, ah, yes, sorry, so I'm going to be there. Can I tell you, that, that mindset is scam. The reward for obeying God is yeah. to be good. Yeah. The more you keep obeying God. Yeah. It will never be about the state. The state will never validate the message. Yeah. Yeah. It's about God validating what he has called you to do and you being accurate like yeah. the word. Yeah. I've heard people preach some messages on our platform and I hear them, I heard someone that minister preach on bigger platform and it's the same thing. It's just that... By grace, his chosen one to be mm. here, one to be where. Mm. So wherever you find yourself, find that, make sure that that's heaven on earth, regardless of the stage mm. of the people. Wherever you find wow. yourself, stop. It's not going to be about, I'm learning it, I'm embracing it. I'm, it's not about the validation of this ad, ah, is this state that called me. Sometimes God will do that. Yeah, sometimes. Mm. If you feel that you can't receive what he's about to send, it will keep you as against getting you bruised yeah. in a way that can't redeem you. Yeah. So go ahead, Pastor, take it up. Thank you, Pastor Emisi. Thank you. I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to have shared. And um, yes, I'll say this. I deliberately didn't share specifically about the miracles mm. and, you know, all of those things, especially, you know, that, that you know, God has done through me. It's deliberate. Um, it's not to play down miracles. <laughs> it's, it's our everyday life and experience. However, but, you know, the journey... The assignment is more important to God than the tools. Um, but I said that to say this. I believe that there are people, you know, watching right mm. now who are in a place of, um, you know, just questions. And you, and you tell yourself, if I had a little bit more mm. miracles, if I had a little bit more manifestations, Come on. You know, maybe I'll be fine. Uh, you will not be fine. Because how many miracles will you need, not just to validate you, but to keep you validated. Come on. You know, so it's not going to be enough. Wow. So we must understand the place of these mighty manifestations. It is not about you. I haven't said that. If you're in a place where you're struggling right now and your heart is right, I believe there is this atmosphere of liberty that releases the capacity, releases the impartation, mm. and brings you out of the place of questions, so a place of ease in manifesting. And you see, you might be wondering, at what point will I pray? I'm already ministering, and the spirit of the words I'm speaking to you are being conveyed into your consciousness. Mm. 
and there's this liberty. There's not just um, a desire, but a believability mm. that I have it. You know, and I believe that's one of the reasons why God sent me to you to say, you know, I deliberately, sp- sp- you know, stripped so that it's not about the hype. You are singing that God uses vessels. Mm. <laughs> and it's not about the vessel. Mm. The excellency is of God. Hallelujah. The excellency is of God. So right there, be blessed. In the name of Jesus. The peace of God is released upon you. Your questions are quietened. Whether you have answers yet or not, the peace of God surpasses your understanding. Mm. The peace of God bypasses every leash of the enemy on your mind, on your consciousness, on your struggle, and breaks that leash, disconnects you from reacting in life. Mm. You become a person Mm. that operates from a deep sense of security and the Father's love. Mm. From that place, all of the manifestations come. You get the help you need. The people that have been called to you, that you've been called to, they'll find you. You find them. Your voice is heard. You're not under pressure to self-validate. Mm. The grace of God rests upon you. And if you're here just watching now and you are believing God for a miracle, this, as you hear my voice, is your miracle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just taking a deep breath. Receive the love and the peace of God. And I curse the sickness, its root and its fruit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Miracles, Amen. miracles, Amen. miracles. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank I hope you. to see you again you. right here at Testimony Corner. God bless you. Thank Amen. you so much, Pastor Shek. Thank you so much. Ikwe Boniso. I better this time. Thank you, guys. Thank Have you. a blessed one.